Hi there, welcome to this recording. We're going to be talking about gastric ultrasound. My name is Marilise, I'm from Calgary and I've been doing point of care ultrasound for over 10 years. I have nothing to declare. Before we start this talk, I would like to give some credit to my mentors in gastric ultrasound, specifically to Dr. Anahi Perlas, who launched this modality way back more than 10 years ago and has done a significant body of work. Also Dr. Adam Spencer from Calgary, who has been a local mentor, and Dr. Christian Urzola, who has taught with me at CAS. I would like to introduce you to a resource, uh, gastricultrasound.org, uh, that you will find very helpful in your journey to understand gastric ultrasound. So let's get started on this fascinating topic. Our goals today will be to review anatomy, look at how we acquire the specific images that we need and then interpret them in both a qualitative and quantitative fashion. How this will inform your decision making around anesthesia choice in patients with borderline stomach content will not fall within the remit of this talk. What are we looking at when we do gastric ultrasound? We are looking at the gastric antrum. It is the wider part of the pylorus, which is the narrower part of the stomach, just upstream from the pyloric canal and the junction of the pyloric sphincter to the duodenum. Why do we pick this part of the stomach to look at? The antrum is very visible and easily identified. In most patients we can see it, 98 to 100% of cases. And it does accurately reflect the content of the stomach as a whole. Where do we see it? The antrum is found between the liver and the pancreas and there are very good vascular landmarks, the aorta and inferior vena cava, that can be used to standardize our scanning plane. Let's look a little bit at how we're going to go ahead and do our image acquisition. What probes do we need? How do we position our patient? Where do we put our probe and how do we identify and fine tune or scanning. For most adult patients, we will use a curved linear probe. In pediatrics or in very skinny patients, sometimes the higher frequency linear probe will do. But for the most part, we need that increased penetration and that the low frequency probe will give us. Our scanning and orientation. Our scanning will take in a parasagittal or sagittal plane we will hold the transducer so the transducer marker is pointed towards the hand and make sure that you set your marker or your indicator on screen to be on the left side of the screen. With the patient in the supine position, we will now place the probe in the epigastrium immediately below the xiphoid process. We will scan the abdomen in a lateral plane from left to right Keeping the probe perpendicular to skin, we will identify stomach, liver, pancreas, superior mesenteric artery, aorta, and inferior vena cava. On the left side of the screen, you can see how we hold the probe and what anatomical structures lies immediately beneath the surface. In our middle picture, the cut that is made by the ultrasound probe with the right side of the picture anterior and the left side towards the patient's back. We see here skin, abdominal muscle, liver, antrum, and pancreas. On the right side, we have flipped this picture through a 90 degree angle so that skin is now anterior and the vertebra posterior. If we display this on ultrasound, the picture that you will see on the right will have these structures visible. You will see skin, then muscle, liver, antrum, marked with an A, the pancreas, marked with the P, and the superior mesenteric artery, or the aorta, and then the spines at the back. How do we know that the little structure that we're looking at is in fact the gastric antrum? The gastric antrum has a very specific an anatomical structure to its wall that makes it pretty easy to identify. We will be looking at five layers. Here in the middle you can see us zooming in on those layers. 
Light is serosa, then muscularis, which is your thick black layer, your submucosa, your mucosa, and then the mucosa luminal interface. In this box at the top, we would see what that would look like on ultrasound. Once we can identify the antrum, we want to decide whether there is content in the antrum. We want to see if there's anything solid, anything liquid, or whether we have, in fact, an empty antrum, which is the preferred state. If we find clear fluid, that's when we move on to the quantitative exam, and we're trying to establish how much volume there is. So what does an empty stomach look like? So very first thing to say is that we have to evaluate this patient in both the supine and the right lateral decubitus position. The stomach can look quite empty in a supine position and yet have liquid and solid content displayed when we evaluate the patient in the right lateral decubitus position. This is what an empty antrum would look like. It's either flat, collapsed, or what we call a, bull, the, a bull's eye, like a round circular shape. Here is another example of what an empty antrum looks like. Uh, empty antrum can actually be quite hard to identify because it sort of disappears. You don't have that lovely cavity that shows you where things are. The easiest one to identify is a gastric antrum filled with liquid. You have this lovely hypoechoic and homogeneous content with a distended antrum that makes it much easier to visualize. Another example of this lovely clear clear, homogeneous uh, liquid fold antrum. A patient like this is where we would do quantitative evaluation to see how large this antrum is to try and predict volume in the stomach. This is what a solid uh, gastric antrum looks like, solid in an early stage and solid in a late stage. In terms of description, empty stomach has this bullseye appearance, small and collapsed antrum surrounded by distinct layers of the stomach wall. Uh, there can be a small volume of liquid in there uh, within a physiological empty stomach. Clear liquids appear hypoechoic, black and homogeneous. Uh, if the fluid was recently ingested though, you can see air bubbles in there. Um, and that's what we call the starry night appearance. Thick liquids appear hyperechoic and homogeneous and solids have a frosted glass appearance. Solids can actually be tricky because they cause a shadow dropout behind, um, behind the stomach and then we can't really see anything. So it just looks like a bad picture and so it's hard to know if you just have a bad picture or if you have solids. Here is another example. We have in the left upper corner an empty stomach, the lovely bull's eye. In the right upper corner, we have that homogeneous, a little bit of a starry night appearance, uh, so clear fluid. And then we have uh, two kinds of solids. The first, the more homogeneous, um, but hyperechoic appearance. And then we have the uh, frosted glass with the, with the dropout below. You can see that shadowing distal to the stomach. You now know how to identify liquid, solid, and empty gastric antrum. How do we quantify the gastric antrum if there's liquids? There's two ways to do this. We can use a grading system or we can do the surface area. In the grading system, what we do is evaluate the gastric antrum in both supine and right lateral decubitus position. If the antrum appears empty in both positions. This is a grade zero stomach, empty. If the, if the stomach is empty in the supine position, yet liquid can be seen in the right lateral decubitus position, that is a grade one stomach, and that is consistent with a small volume of gastric fluid, usually not a risk. Grade two is clear fluid visible in both supine as well as right lateral decubitus position, and this is consistent with more than 100 moles of gastric content in 75% of cases. Pretty easy to do, and it gives you a good sense of how much volume there is. If you want to get more exact, you can measure the surface area of the gastric antrum. And you can do that in two ways. You can trace it out, or you can do perpendicular diameters. 
So this would be how you do the perpendicular diameter. Uh, you would do a long and a short axis and then the machine will do the calculation for you and you would go from serosa to serosa so you would in include the gastric wall in your measurement. You do the same when you do the surface area. So it looks like you're going kind of around the stomach but that's because you include the gastric antrum wall in your calculation. So you go around the serosa. In this slide, we just have a couple of examples of how this is traced out. So for an empty stomach, then for clear liquids, thick liquids and solids. So it does look a little bit sometimes like you're coloring outside of the, um, of the picture lines, but that is because we really want to get outside of that muscularis um, and, and use the serosa as our guide. So to recap, you identify the gastric antrum, you make a decision about whether the stomach has solid content in it, in which case you know the stomach is full, the stomach, or whether the stomach is empty and there's nothing in there. And then if, if either of those things are present, then you're done. If you find a significant amount of fluid in the stomach, you now want to do your volumetric calculation and you're going to do that either by grading, grade one, fluid presence, um, in the right lateral decubitus position, but not supine or grade two present in both positions, or you're going to do that surface area calculation, go to the table that you can find on that website gastricvolume.org. You're going to use the table to predict the volume in the stomach and use that as a measure to guide your anesthetic technique. So now that we know that what we're looking for, we're going to do some real life scanning and I'm going to show you three models with empty, liquid and solid filled stomachs. Here's our demo one uh, done by Dr. Graham Bishop from Calgary. And there you can see your lovely flat gastric antrum, no fluid in there at all. You would turn your patient into the right lateral decubitus position if this was a supine image. This patient now had a drink and you can see the clear fluid full lumen. And then we gave the patient something to eat and you can see that solid content with the loss of imaging beyond it. Here is our demo two done by Dr. Christy Santisham. And starting off our model with a empty stomach. Here is our fluid full stomach and the supine position. You can see that clear homogeneous echolucent lumen. This pa that patient was then turned on to their right lateral decubitus position. You can see an increase in size as well as the starry night appearance. This is our model. This is our model following solids and increasing solids coming through that gastric antrum. The third demonstration that we're going to do is mostly to look at the difference between the pictures that we see between supine and right lateral decubitus. I can't impress on you enough how important it is that you evaluate patients in the right lateral decubitus position. Just doing supine evaluations will not be adequate. We'll start with our model here. This is supine on an empty stomach. This is our model in the right lateral decubitus position stole with the empty stomach. You can see the nice little bullseye. Now we're giving our model a lovely glass of water and we are still supine, still a nice flat antrum. And here you can now see the difference between supine and right lateral decubitus. We have a fair amount of fluid in that antrum, lovely starry night. I'm now going to give this model a yogurt drink. This is our supine position. 
you can get an idea that there's something in there, but it's still pretty, it still looks pretty empty. And this is what you see when you go right lateral to cupid is. It's completely different. Very, very full stomach there with that homogenous content that you get with something like yogurt. Next step, we give the model something to eat. And this is supine. Again, you can see the stomach. Con yeah, but this, it's not impressive, like it's not empty, but certainly not wouldn't be too concerning. And now you turn the patient right lateral to cupid is, and you can really see that mixture of solid and liquid there. My points of caution, um, your assessment can be very limited if you can't get the patient into a right lateral decubitus position. Your antrum can be difficult to find and assess in about 2-3% of normal individuals. And I find that especially in patients that have empty stomachs, it's actually sometimes hard to find the antrum because it's so flat and it just kind of disappears. Your ultrasound findings may be unreliable in patients, or probably will be unreliable, in patients who have, have pathology. So previous gastric surgery, large hiatus hernias, or if you have um, herniation into the chest. And then the, for me, there is sometimes, um, I find it hard to distinguish between the liquid starry night and the homogeneous solid. Where are we in our journey for um, gastric ultrasound. The most recent publication um, that I saw made a very strong case for it. Um, this is by Dr. Perlas and Dr. Kreiselbrink who have both done a lot of work on this. And, uh, and they feel that based on their and others' work, they can now definitively say that it is an accurate and reliable tool to objectively assess gastric content and aspiration risk at the bedside. Mm -hmm.